everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have a brand new colored pencil set. These are the 72 set of Artix colored pencils. They were just released on Amazon this week. These were sent to me by the company for review and so that I could share them with all of you. And if you've watched my colored pencil reviews before, you know that we are going to put these through lots of tests. So we are going to unbox them. I always like to unbox everything in the video because I like for y'all to see how they're packaged when they come to you. We are going to take a look at the pencils. We are going to put them through the pencil sharpener test and the blend test. We are going to swatch them all out and we're gonna take a look at the colors. So if you would like to see that, please do stick around. If you check the description box down below, I will have the link down there for these pencils so that you could easily find them. I will also have links down there for my Facebook group, my email list, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. Let's go ahead and start unboxing these. So when they initially came to me, like with most Amazon shipments lately, you get them in a bag. So they did come in a bag and then they came in this bubble wrap here. So let's go ahead and take off the bubble wrap. And I have seen these and the box <laughs> is gorgeous. I absolutely love the box that these come in. Look at that adorable artwork on these. Look at the adorable little bunnies and the pumpkins. It's just the cutest ever. But let's go ahead and take off the plastic. And let's check out these pencils. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the box. It just says here, saturated colors, soft core, artist quality. Then when we turn it over, it says up here colored pencils. They have 3.8 millimeter soft cores. These are a wax-based pencil. At least that is what I was told by the company. It says richly saturated pigments, wide range of colors, break resistant lead, and easy to blend. But then here it just shows us the colors that we get in this set. And then down here it just gives us all the information and how to find the company. So it has their website and then how to find them on Facebook and I do also know that they have a Facebook group as well where you can share anything that you've done with their products so let's go ahead and take the top off of these and so you can see here that you do get a nice little storage container is that not the coolest thing ever and these pencils are really pretty we're going to take a closer look at the pencils though but it looks like you've got this let me go ahead and pull one out here they come out very nicely and they do have this, let me hold this up a little bit closer here, but you can see that they have this rubbery black casing inside here, inside the cardboard storage case. So you can see how they would hold your pencil in. They are held in there pretty snug. And so you just pull it out and it does come right out, but you can feel that they are in there pretty good. Now I did pull out the first one and the first one was a much tighter fit, but now after I pulled the first one out, the other ones come out much, much easier. So let's go ahead and take a look at these pencils and do you all see what I see? This one that I pulled out first, this looks like a light blue. <laughs> Y'all know how excited I get when I see a light blue. Of course, we're going to have to swatch it out and see actually how light it is, but it looks light, but it doesn't look that light. So we're going to see on the front of the pencil, you're going to have the name of the company here. So it just says Artix colored pencil, and it has this little star in the middle for some added decoration. If I turn it over here, you can see that they are really pretty. They've got these little stars and dots all up and down the barrel. We have a UPC code on here, sim similar to the Polychromos. And then over here, we do have the color number, and you can see that they do have a color name. So this one is Cloud Blue. I'm excited about that because I thought initially looking at the swatch on the box that they weren't going to have a color name and I love for my pencils to have color names so that is really neat but I love the decorations on here look at these pretty stars and I love that they have the colored barrels but this is what the tips of the pencils look like when they come to you 
and you can see that it does have that flat tip and I believe that they do that just to protect the leads of the pencils. When you get your colored pencils in the mail, it's always very important to go ahead and sharpen them so that you don't end up with scratchy colored pencils. I'll sometimes see posts in my Facebook group where people are saying that they just received their colored pencils and their colored pencils are scratchy. And a lot of times I'll comment and I'll ask them if they have sharpened their colored pencils. Most of the time the colored pencils do have a wax film over there just to protect them in shipping and such. So it's important that you do take that off. And I always like really nice sharp leads on my pencils. If you've been watching my videos for quite some time, y'all know how much I love to have a really, really sharp, sharp lead on my pencil because I like to be able to get into those very small, intricate areas with my colored pencils and not end up going out of the lines on my coloring pages. So this set here is going to have 70 universal colors and then it's going to come with two metallics. So it looks like the metallics in this this set are going to be gold and silver. The leads on the pencils are going to be 3.8 millimeters thick and the barrels are 7.8 millimeters thick and they are a round pencil. And as I said earlier, they are marketed as a soft core wax based pencil. They are also marketed as light fast, but we all know when we are talking about budget friendly pencils, you cannot always trust that your pencils are gonna be light fast. And if you are new to my channel or you're new to this hobby and you're just getting yourself familiar with colored pencils or learning about colored pencils, light fast just means how long that the color, once you place it down on your coloring page or your artwork, it just means how long that color is going to withstand the light and how long it is going to take before it fades. And most pencils have different light fast ratings and you will find that on a lot of your more artist grade pencils. But usually on the budget friendly sets or the artist grade sets that are marketed as light fast, you would see some stars or something signifying their level of light fastness right on the pencil and I don't see anything like that. It looks like all the silver decorations here, these little stars are the same throughout the whole entire set. And as I start pulling more out and I look at them and we get further into the video, I can check that a little bit more, but I've looked through quite a lot of them and it looks like the decoration is the same on all of them and they all have this one little star right here. So it looks like the star are just really a decoration. They have three little dots right here, but it looks like every one of them have three dots as well right here. So I don't think any of the decoration on these are going to tell us the level of light fastness of any of these pencils. And it doesn't say anything like that on the box anywhere, but it does say on the Amazon listing that they are light fast. These pencils are available on Amazon for only $29.99. And actually right now there is a 20% off coupon. So if you are interested in these, you will find the link down in the description box below and make sure when you go to that link that you do check off your coupon. So that will take off an extra $6. So at checkout, you would end up spending $23.99 for these pencils, which is a fantastic deal. But let's move on to some of the tests we're gonna do and see how they perform. <laughs> so I have both of my favorite pencil sharpeners, an electric pencil sharpener choice for you all and my beloved doll 133. <laughs> And then my newer discovery for an electric sharpener, for those of you that don't want or can't use a hand crank pencil sharpener, this is another fabulous option. So we're going to test the pencils on the Doll 133 first. And I think I wanna go with my light blue because you all know how much I love light blue. So we're just gonna pull this out like this and stick the pencil in. And we are going to see how hard or soft the wood is in these pencils. That's why I like to use the Doll 133 because that tells me or really lets me know the quality of the wood on these pencils, if it's rather hard or if it's a softer wood. And this is fairly, uh, it's kind of in the middle. It will stop when it's done. So you could see how it just 
gave up right there and it wasn't as difficult to turn as it was previously and that is when it's time to pull it out. Look at that nice beautiful sharp lead by my doll 133. I absolutely love it. Now this pencil was somewhere in between, somewhere in the middle. So it wasn't as hard as something like a Crayola. If you put a Crayola color pencil in here, you will have a very hard time turning the lever because they are made with a very, very hard wood. When we're talking budget-friendly pencils, I would consider those the most budget-friendly pencil and they are made with hard, hard wood. So the quality of the wood on those barrels on a Crayola are not going to be great quality, but y'all know I love my Crayolas, no matter what. <laughs> but these are somewhere right in the middle because if I took a Prismacolor, we all know how soft the Prismacolors are, but if I took that and I put that in this pencil sharpener, the Prismacolor would be very easy to turn the lever. So this one was definitely somewhere right in the middle. It wasn't too hard to turn, but it wasn't easy to turn either. And that's pretty similar to most of the budget sets that you will find on Amazon. Okay, so let's see how nicely they sharpen in the jar link. Now, if you've been watching my videos for quite some time, you know that I just discovered this jar link not too long ago. It's been a few months now. The Doll 133 was my absolute favorite. I wouldn't use anything else. I didn't think that I would ever be using an electric pencil sharpener because most of the time they just scare me and I want them to be able to auto stop. This one definitely auto stops and it creates the perfect lead as long as you keep it on three. So always keep it on three and you won't have a problem. It works with the Prisma colors and it sharpens anything from a six millimeter to a 12 millimeter lead. You could see the hole is rather big on here. It's not a teeny tiny little hole. There are grips in there that hold your pencil nice and securely, so you're not going to get those ridges on your pencils. And it's a really, really nice sharpener, and it stops when it's supposed to. <laughs> and that is the most important thing for me. It also does sharpen pencils that are square, pencils that are hexagonal, like the Pablo's, or like your square brute fooners. So it's a really great sharpener. I grabbed this yellow color here and we're gonna test this one out in the jar link. This one is lemon yellow, but oh my gosh, I wonder if that color swatches out as bright as it looks. Look at that color, how different it looks from the barrel of the pencil. The barrel of the pencil looks like an actual, what would be lemon yellow color, but that looks very, very fluorescent. I can't wait to see when we swatch these how the colors go down onto the paper. So you can see that that went in there very nicely and I'm just gonna push down and sharpen it. And you can see that it auto stopped when it was supposed to and that is my gorgeous lead on my pencil. And I'll hold up the one here that I did in the doll and you can see that they are very, very similar, almost exact. You could see that it sharpened the exact same place and the leads look almost exactly the same on the pencil. If I hold them like this and line them up, you can see that they are probably almost exactly the same. I don't really see a difference in either one. If you see a difference, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. I wanted you all to be able to see all the colors that come in the set laid out because they were a little bit hard to see in the box because there were so many going down along the center. But let's go ahead and just take a look at the colors that we get just looking at the barrels and the leads of the pencil. Now I did spend some time for the last hour or so trying to put these colors in some kind of order because in the box they were not in a really great order, at least not an order that I would prefer. So I tried to put them in somewhat of a color family order. Of course, it's not perfect, but if I'm gonna spend the time swatching them all out and everything, I want that to be my swatch. So I wanna make sure that I have them in some kind of color order. I may change it later, I may not, but these are the colors that come in the set and it looks like we get an awful lot of yellows. So you could see here, there are actually quite a few yellows and these two here, I know I was questioning those earlier because they look so bright and vibrant and gorgeous. I swatched those two out and they are very bright, just like the core looks. They swatch out almost exactly the same. We do get some yellow ochre type colors or goldish yellows 
and then we get a couple orangey yellows over here and we do get a peach and a light peach and we do get a beige. I'm wondering if I should move that one down here with these because we also down here get what they are calling ginger root. But I put that one right down here with the browns. I think maybe I'll just keep the beige right there with my peach and light peach for now. We'll see what happens later. But we do get a few oranges and then we get a couple reds. We do get some reds that are very much darker. This one is a Tuscan red. And then this one here is a crimson red. We get a few pinks. We get some pinks that have a little bit more purple in them and then some pinks that have a little bit more red in them. So we get a couple of both of those, which is great for a 72 set. Then we have a couple purples. We get a really light purple here and then one that's just a little bit darker. At least that's the way it looks when I look at them here. And then we get a couple of violets and then we start to get into our blues. We have a beautiful indigo blue here, which is rather dark. I did swatch that one out. So that's a really nice blue. I did notice on a lot of these pencils, a lot of the names are similar to Prismacolors. This one here is a cerulean blue and a true blue. So you can see that a lot of these color names are very similar to Prismacolors. Again, here we have a cloud blue, so we do get a very light blue. I can't wait to swatch that one out. I think that's probably the only one I didn't swatch out of the blues. We do get a couple teal type colors here, some that have more blue, and then we get this one here that has more green in it. And then we get some other greens down here, your typical greens you would get in, an L in any set, the lighter greens, the brighter greens, and then the greens that are the more olive olivier greens. <laughs> and then we have our ginger root color here, and I always like to put my ginger root way down here. So like I said, you can see a lot of these names are the same as what you would get in a Prisma color set. And if I had to really look at these, I think that every one of these names are the same as what you get in a Prisma color set. I don't think this one here is called Rose Red and I don't think we have a Rose Red in the Prisma colors. This one is Magenta, so another one that has the same name as a Prisma color, Tuscan Red, Crimson Red. And then all of our grays, we have one that is called a yellowed gray, and then we have some that are cool grays and warm grays, and they are all done by percentages, just like the Prisma colors. Over here we have our browns, so we have light umber, sepia, and then a dark umber, and I threw these into some kind of order. They're probably not perfect. So I zoomed out a little bit more so you could see these down here at the bottom. It was a little bit difficult to get them all in the frame. I don't wanna mess them up because I want to be able to get all the names down on the swatch chart and swatch them just like this. So we do have a silver here and a gold here for our two metallics. And then we have our black and we have our white pencil. And so that is all of the colors. That's all 72 colors that you're going to get in this set. And I think it is time to go ahead and move on to the swatching. And then after I swatch out all the colors, we are gonna do a review of the colors. I have all the colors laid out in the order that I placed them in and it is time to go ahead and swatch the colors. I've written in all the names. And I did notice that I mistakenly didn't put white first, but I put white at the end of the swatch, but that's okay because the color family order is not going to be exact. And I did notice that, like I said earlier, most of these have the same names as the Prisma colors, but I did notice a couple colors that we don't have or a couple color names that we don't have in the Prisma colors, like there is this yellowish gray. We don't have that in the Prisma color set. The rose red, and this color here is, I believe it's a yellow and it's called shortbread. And I think that's all. Most of the other ones are pretty much identical to the names on the Prisma colors, which is very interesting. I wonder if they are almost trying to be a dupe for the Prisma colors. I guess after we swatch them all out and I get a feel for how they feel after I lay them all down on the swatch chart, I will be able to see how similar they are compared to the Prisma colors. There is nothing as soft as a Prisma color, so I definitely don't think they're going to be that soft. I did notice while I was swatching a couple of them out, trying to put them in some kind of order, I did have a couple lids break, so they are pretty soft. 
but I don't think that they are soft as a Prismacolor at all. So this swatch chart here is available in my Etsy shop and I will always have a link down in the description box below where you can get your swatch charts if you would like to. But the 72 chart does come just like this and then I also have it where it has division lines in each one of these boxes for those of you that are beginners and struggle a little bit still to be able to make that gradient of color to show the different values of each one of the colors on your swatch chart. When I swatch my colors out, you will see that I like to do light and then medium and then dark just because I like to see all the different values of the colors that I could get out of one colored pencil. So we're going to go ahead and start swatching these now and I'm going to speed that portion up to music. Then we're going to come back and I will do a review of the colors. colors are all swatched out and I did put all the pencils back in here but in my order and I will say 
they were a little bit difficult to get back in here exactly the way they were. You could see this one here is just sort of loose. I would really recommend if you're interested in these pencils that you buy one of the 72 cases on Amazon to store these in. And after swatching these, I really do like them. And so I probably am going to order myself a case for these. It does look like that I probably skipped one of the colors in here and just put them back in wrong, but that's okay. I will probably most likely be purchasing one of the uh, BTSKY 72 cases for this set and I will have that linked down in the description box below. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these pencils and how they felt as I was laying them down. First, I do wanna say there was not one scratchy pencil. These pencils went down like a dream, like they really did. They went down so, so nicely. This is the Spring Hill paper that I always print my swatch charts out on and they worked really nicely with this paper. They went down so smooth and so beautifully. They were extremely pigmented. If you watched through the speed through of the swatching, you could see that they were extremely pigmented. The second the pencil touched the paper, the color went down and it really layered very, very nicely when I was trying to create the gradients. Now they are a softer pencil. Like I said earlier, I knew that they were not going to be as soft as a Prismacolor. Nothing is as soft as a Prismacolor. Prismacolor is in a box all on its own. <laughs> But these were really, really nice. And if I had to say which pencils they reminded me of as I was laying them down on the paper, I would have to say that they remind me very much of my Arteza pencils. And if y'all have seen some of the most popular videos on my channel in my beginner series, you know that I absolutely love the Arteza pencils. Some of my most popular tutorials are done with the Arteza pencils. I'll link that tutorial up in the upper right hand corner so that you can watch that one. It is a whole video showing you how to determine the shadows and the lighting and everything else on your coloring pages. And it's a fantastic video, but these very much remind me of those pencils. And I don't know if maybe I should do a comparison of colors between these and the Arteza. If you would like me to do that, let me know and I will be glad to post that in my Facebook group and update you. It doesn't seem as though they are the same colors and they definitely do have different names because like I said, these follow the Prisma colors. Now I will say some of them were softer than others and it really was dependent on how sharp the lead was. You could see on some of them, some of them I didn't leave in the pencil sharpener as long as others. So some of them have a more dull lead than some of the others. And the ones that were really super, super sharp, they did break. You could see here I had a little bit of breakage from the Imperial Violet. I left it on the swatch chart on purpose so that you all could see the Rose Red. I had a little bit of breakage from that one, the Magenta. There was a few crumbs from the Violet and the Ultramarine, but it wasn't too bad. And I do not mind crumbly pencils at all. You all know that I love Prismacolors, and to me, Prismacolors do have quite a few crumbles, and those are one of my most favorite pencils, and I have no problem with that because I feel like if there is a little bit of crumble, I don't know, I just like the way that they work on the paper and the way that they blend together and the way that they layer and how the pigment from the pencil just sort of moves around on the paper. If you are going to use the container, if you do purchase these and you are going to use the storage container they come with, you could see that I put all these back in here with the tips facing upward because after I sharpened them, I didn't want to put them back down because my le my leads on my pencils no longer had that flat tip that they come with when they are actually shipped to you. So I wanted to make sure my leads on my pencils were protected so I faced them up. What I was gonna look and I was gonna see if their, their colors matched up to what you would get from the same name of the same color of a Prisma color. If you look at the sand color, I know exactly what sand in the Prisma color 
color set looks like and that is completely just totally far off from the sand that you would get in the Prismacolor. Now just to show you on one of them this is what I was using just to swatch out some of the colors so I could put them in order but this is the yellow chartreuse here from this set and this is the Prismacolor yellow chartreuse and they are awfully close but this lemon yellow from the Arctic set is very close to the yellow chartreuse. So I'm pretty sure that that lemon yellow is not the same as what you would get from your Prismacolor. I have the crimson red and here is the crimson red from the Arctic set. That is my Prismacolor Crimson Red, and you could see that they are a little bit different. They're very, very close, but this one looks a little bit brighter. There's a little bit of a better swatch of it, but the colors are a little bit different. They are very, very close though. Let's try the pink because I know that we have a pink in this set. Here is the pink from the Arctic set. And that is the pink from this set. So those are pretty close too. I think that I need to check that lemon yellow. Let me grab my lemon yellow. I can't find my lemon yellow anywhere, so let me try the cream. So there is the cream in a Prismacolor. It's very, very light. Hopefully you could see that. And there's the cream in the Arctic set. So you can see that these are very different. This looks more like a true cream. This is very yellow. And let's try one more. Here's my light aqua. And there is the light aqua in this set and they are very very close so quite a few of them are going to be very close to Prismacolors I don't want to spend a whole lot of time sitting here trying to compare them to the Prismacolors if you would like to see that that would be a whole nother video so let me know if you would like to see that in the comments below so let's go ahead and do a review of the colors as we can see them now laid out on the swatch chart so we start here with the cream y'all know I normally start with white but I didn't this time and I don't, I don't know, I was distracted. <laughs> so we're starting with cream, but we have cream, we have a couple yellows, we got some yellows with orange in them. We have our chartreuse colors. These two colors are different, but very, very close. A yellow ochre and then a golden rod. The yellow ochre and the golden rod are very similar. This one definitely has more yellow in it. And then we come down here and these three colors, they are very similar. The shortbread, the sunburst yellow, and the sand, they're all very similar to one another. We have a yellowed orange here. And then here we have a beige. We have our light peach and our peach. Here we have an orange. So we have a couple more oranges here. We have this orange here, then we have what they're calling pale vermilion right here. And then we have our poppy red, our carmine red. This looks like it may be similar to the Prismacolor carmine red, red as well from what I can remember. So in this set, you do get quite a few reds. This magenta over here still has quite a bit of red in it, even though it does lean a little bit towards the pinks. We have the rose red here. We even have a Tuscan red that's gonna have a lot of brown in it but that's a really pretty color. I love that we get a very dark, dark red and we've get, we get a pink and a blush pink. So we do get a very pale pink, which is really nice in a set that only has 72 colors. Here is our purpley pink or mulberry and then we have a dark purple. We get a couple more purples, we get some violets and then we go here into the blues. This violet blue looks very much like the ultramarine. They are very similar to one another. You could look at this and you could see that this does have a little more purple in it but they're very very close. Then we get an indigo blue which this is a gorgeous color and then Copenhagen blue then we have this peacock blue here, which is a gorgeous color. And then we get a few more blues here. These are all very different. And then we get this gorgeous cloud blue here. Definitely does not match the cloud blue that you would get with the Prismacolors. It is definitely much darker and it is very gray. It's like a very gray blue. Then we have a couple aqua shades here, a jade blue and a light aqua a parrot green, which is a beautiful, bright, bright, vibrant green. We have a dark green, a grass green. This grass green does look very similar to the Prismacolor grass green. And I believe the true green looks very similar as well. Here is my true green. I don't have my swatch chart anymore, but this is my true green and that's what the lead looks like on my true green and they are very, very similar. The spring green is also going to be very similar and then so is the chartreuse green and the apple green. And I believe the lime peel probably is too. We get an olive green. This turquoise gray is a gorgeous color. We have ginger root. And then we get a couple browns. So we get browns from here 
all the way through to here so we get our typical browns and a few different shades of them. This one actually is darker than what they're calling sepia, but they these three here, they do look very, very similar. They are a little bit different though. And then we have the burnt ochre here. So this is a brown that has a lot of orange in it and then a terracotta. We get a yellowish gray and then we get our different values of gray. So we get a 20% warm gray and then we get an even warmer gray. So we go from 20% to 50%, then to 70. And then we get into our cool grays. We get a 20, a 50, and a 70 of those. We also get a black, which is a very nice black. It looks to be a warmer black. And then our metallic gold and our sil silver, those went down so nicely. They were so soft and just went right down on the paper. They are very pigmented. They are gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And then we have our white, and I will say the white went down beautifully as well. So far, I really am enjoying these pencils, and I am glad to have another budget set that I did not feel not even one scratchy pencil and I really do like these. They just went down really, really beautifully on the swatch chart, and I will be coloring with them. If you would like to see a video of me coloring with these, please let me know in the comments below. We need to go ahead and do a blend test and really put these to the test to see how they perform, so we are going to do that now. So this blend test for this pencil review is going to be a little bit different than what I would normally do because these colors are matching up so much with the Prismacolors that I really wanted to do a comparison in this blend test with the Prismacolors. So I grabbed the exact colors. I've got my Artix pencils here and I have my Prismacolors here and we are going to do a blend test with both of these. We're going to blend together the Artix and see how well they blend, how many layers we could get down on the paper. And then right next to it, we're going to go ahead and use the Prismacolors. This way we could see how much the colors match up together and the difference in how much pigment goes down on the paper compared to the Prismacolors. So I pulled out my swatch chart and the colors that I chose were the dark purple, the mulberry, and the pink because I think those will blend together really, really nicely. And when you're getting a 72 set of pencils or a set that only has 72 in it, you want to know that you are definitely going to have colors that you could put together three colors and be able to create gorgeous color combinations. And I do see a lot of that in this set. We have just as many dark colors as we do light colors and mid-tones. So I'll give you an example. If we look at the greens, I can instantly see that this olive green and then probably the lime peel and the ginger root would look gorgeous together. And then if we moved up here to our shades of orange and red, we could probably do something like the Tuscan red and the Crimson Lake. And if we wanted to go even lighter, we could use this carmine red that is sort of like an orangey red or it looks sort of like a watermelon color. It's really, really pretty. And we could also do something like the poppy red, the orange, and the sand or even throw some jasmine in there. But there are lots of choices in this set to be able to create color combinations, even though we do only have 72 colors. And sometimes it's better to have only 72 colors than having a whole big, huge set of 150 or 120, because it makes it much easier to just pick up your pencils and get started on a coloring page, because you don't have as many choices or as many colors to choose from that are staring back at you. So we're gonna go ahead and start with with the Artix and do these first. And I'm gonna start with my darkest and go into my lightest since these are supposedly a wax-based pencil and they do feel like a wax-based pencil when I was laying the colors down on the swatch chart. So let's go ahead and lay down the dark purple. And we are going to come back with the mulberry. And then we have our pink. And these are already blending together very nicely. So let's come back and maybe go the other direction. Let's lay down our darkest color or the dark purple and then the mulberry. Now, when I was reading through some of the information they had on Amazon, one of the things that they said was that you could get, I think five layers down with these very, very easily and I probably could get more layers than that down. I think we are on three. 
Let's see if I can beat what they are saying on the Amazon listing. So this was three, and then we're coming back with four. And if you're using the right paper, you could definitely get more layers down, especially if you're not pushing really hard and putting a whole lot of pressure down on your colored pencils. Okay, I think that was four. Gosh, I'm gonna lose track. Okay, so this is five, and we're gonna come back the other direction, and I'm gonna lift up as I come into that transition area so that we get a really smooth transition there with these colors. And as I come into that pink, I'm lifting up just a little bit coming back in at that transition and pulling the color down. And y'all, I have five layers down here and all of the white of the paper is still not filled and that pigment just goes right down there. These pencils are extremely pigmented. So let's go in for six here. And this is six with the mid-tone and then six with our lightest color. And usually what I get with budget pencils is right about seven, and I'm at seven now. Usually when I get to seven, I will be using a little bit more pressure behind my pencil. So now we're coming in here and we're laying down eight, and I still have plenty of the white of the paper left with these. These are really nice pencils. What did I say this was, eight? See, I already lost track. I think this is eight, and we're gonna come back and do nine. And once I get that color down on the paper, it is really movable. I really love that about colored pencils. When you get enough of the color down and you can feel the color from the pencil moving around on the paper. Is this 10? I think it might be 10. And then get my latest color down there. And I still have some of the white of the paper left with those. If you look really closely, you could see that there are still quite a bit of the white of the paper left and I did get a few little crumbs but like I said that doesn't really matter much to me just blow them away or use a brush and take them away so that they don't get in the outer edges of your coloring pages where you don't want them but let me go ahead and hold that blend really close and you can see that it is pretty seamless these are really nice pencils Okay, so I went ahead and labeled the paper so we know which is which so that we don't get confused. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay down the Prismacolors and we are going to do it the same way we did the Artix. And you could already see that the color is different and they do feel different when they lay down. Of course, like I said, I really don't think there's anything like a Prismacolor. I mean, they feel similar, but you could just feel the difference from the Prismacolor to the Artix pencil when they lay down. These are definitely a much softer pencil, and the Artix pencils are soft, but they're not going to be as soft as a Prismacolor. So this is my second layer. Now we're going to come back and we're going to do a third, a third of the mid-tone, and then a third of the lightest color. So now we're on four. And look at that mulberry, how it pretty much matches up, and the pink. These colors are so pretty together. Okay, so now we're on five. We are going into six, and I'm going to go the opposite direction. And of course, when I come into that transition, I'm going to try to pull up just a little bit so that we can get a seamless blend there. Okay, I think this is seven, and then seven with the mulberry. I think the white of the paper is probably covering quicker with the Prismacolors. And then we are going to come in here with eight and the eighth of our lightest color. This is nine. I want to be able to get to 10 because I think if I remember correctly, that's what we got to really work in this transition here and spread those colors out. But do you see how the Prisma colors just sort of move around? They definitely move around more than the Arctics, but the Arctics do move around. And I think this is 10. And you could already tell how much softer the Prisma colors are because when I look at these right up against one another, this looks like it's painted on and this definitely looks similar to other colored pencils that are a little bit harder, but this looks very soft and waxy. So I don't feel like these have as much wax in them as a Prisma color would. They still look very smooth. I could still see a little bit of the white of the paper and the Prisma color. I've covered quite a bit of the white of the paper over here on this side. You you could see that I did get a few little crumbs, so they are very comparable to what I got from the Artix pencils. But you just blow them away and there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> so let me go ahead and hold these up very close here. 
and I don't see that much of a difference with the Prisma colors. Y'all have to let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm always curious to hear what y'all think. I'd like to go through all of these tests and do all of these things so that y'all are able to determine on your own whether or not you think these pencils would be a good fit for you because we all like different types of colored pencils. Some of us like colored pencils that are oil-based. Some of us like wax-based. Some of us like softer pencils or harder pencils. It's really all up to the individual user of the colored pencil and what their likes or dislikes are. So hopefully when you watch these videos, you'll be able to get an idea of whether or not the pencils are for you and of course I will have a link down in the description box below if you are interested in these. So I hope you all really enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing me put these pencils through all of those little individual tests and the blend test and the sharpener test and all of that. I hope that you were able to decide whether or not these pencils are for you. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you think you're going to pick some up. I will have a link down in the description box below for everything you You've seen in this video and I don't know if I mentioned but the paper that I did the blend test on is the Nina paper because the Spring Hill paper has been very hard to get a hold of it's not even available I don't know when it's going to come back so I have been using the Nina paper and testing it out with different pencils just to see if I like it as much as the Spring Hill paper the Spring Hill paper that I was suggesting is toothier than this paper and a little bit thicker I think than this paper is but I do really like this paper as well so as we move forward I'm you're probably going to see me using this paper a whole lot and I will have links for that down in the description box below if you would like to try this paper out as well I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video happy coloring bye, bye.